Welcome back to the Pumpernickel Podcast. Pumpernickel! As always, oh, I'm sorry, we are down one man. We are down Elvin today. Yeah, yeah if you haven't uh, figured it out by the lack of his, like, extremely loud voice. But we still have Nathaniel, Eddie, Black Mike, and the whitest of mics. <laughs> the whitest of all mics. At least the whitest in the room. That's right. By far. I'm the whitest in the sunlight. I'm the whitest when I stand in the shade. I'm white <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Always white. Always pay my taxes on time. So is that what Black Mike does it? Do you pay your taxes on yeah. time? Always. <laughs> okay. But I probably pay them before you do. <laughs> <laughs> I've already paid next year's taxes. I'm good. You, sl- you slip them. Is, yeah. that, is that not an adult conversation? That's okay. okay. Right before I start to embezzle money. That's a white crime. That's a white crime. I've heard of that. <laughs> That's a NFL kicker crime. <laughs> you know, That's the punter. Yeah. That's the I own an NFL that's team. That's not an NFL lineman crime. That's the kicker <laughs> got arrested for tax fraud. All this domestic abuse. No. Yeah, as a Latino in this country, I can't afford to embezzle, embezzle money. money. Embezzle money <laughs> or tax evasion. I don't make enough money to get caught for tax evasion. I'm clean. Yeah. If anyone ever accused me of tax evasion, I'd be like, look, man, I'm Latino. You know I don't think that. I mean, to be fair, if any of us have paid taxes, what are they getting, like 10 grand? At most. Maybe. Yeah, at most. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe 10 grand. Yeah, they ain't worth and the they, time. And they, and they yeah. don't care about the $10,000. No. It's like when you steal a gun ball from Walmart. They don't care. <laughs> like, like it costs more for them to investigate a $10,000 claim than it is, you know. Because like, there's those big boxes like Whoppers and like Gummy Bears at Walmart. I stole three or four of those Whoppers. No one's giving a shit. <laughs> yeah, Walmart will prosecute you if it's uh, below 20 bucks. If it's not worth it. I mean, mine was below $1. My mom's like 35 was, cents for the walk. You know, which one they do to these gas stations? And I know this is very, we're already kind of going off the wheels here, but like, you know, at like food marts and gas stations, how they say uh, under surveillance will prosecute for shop, like, for shoplifting? Yeah. Like, who's prosecuting a, a like, Snickers bar? Right. <laughs> like, oh, I pocketed a Snickers bar. You'd be surprised, man. Like, the, some of the people in them gas stations be like watching you like a hawk. Like, they're, they're not going to call 911, but they're going to watch you to make sure you don't walk out with nothing you ain't paid for. It. You true. know what? I think it's because they most of their profits come from that, right? That's true. Their profits come from, like, sales from, like, snacks and stuff. Yeah. It's also more so than the gasoline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. It's not like Costco where that's a multi-billion dollar multinational corporation. It's, like, two guys at a gas station. Yeah, like, so, like, every cent counts. Yeah. yeah. When you're a CEO of that establishment... You have to know what you're doing. You got to know your numbers. Right. Which, which is an excellent segue, and not obvious in any way, to our <laughs> first topic. <laughs> so, the question posed earlier was, CEO or a high-level manager or high-level whatever business person has the perceived effect that they know what's going on, that they are in tune with everyone's jobs or capable of whatever's around them, however... I think that A, they really do have insecurities just like we all do, and B, what is weird to me is that all of us probably have that perception to some other person. Like some uh, like 16 year old kid in high school probably looks at us like a high level C-suite director. Right, college graduates with jobs will look at us and be like, oh, those guys, they know shit and they know what they're doing. When the reality is 180%. 180 degrees the other way. <laughs> See, I, I don't know the difference between percentages and degrees. <laughs> when the reality is, there's this thing called Google, so all my questions can be answered there. Correct. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Uh, but no, like, um, I've spoken, I've been in an office environment for a long time, and, like, a lot of people are intimidated by, like, people who have any level of authority. Which is weird, because I was looking at as, like, Let's say the dude's like the same as like John or something. John, that was probably some dude's drinking buddy in college. <laughs> you know, he, he's no different than me. He just gets paid more money. Yeah. Or she gets whatever. You know, it's No, you're right, you're right. A lot of it is Or somebody's dad or is, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it is just BSing it, right? Like a lot of it is like you BS the stuff you don't know and you, what you do know you gotta do you do well. Or you do well enough. Yeah. Yeah. You do well enough. Cause like 
companies care about the bottom dollar, right? And as long as there's someone who can get the job done, they don't care. True. They don't care who it is. Yeah. And like, as long as someone is getting them paying, like, if a shareholder of a company, as long as that CEO is making them money, they don't care who it is, what they know, what they don't know. It's true. Yeah. Also, just, like, the, the perceived, like, notion that they all know, like, what's going on. Like, when you delegate, like, you don't know what's going on. Whoever you told to go do the thing knows exactly what's going on. And yeah. if they tell you what's happening, you get, like, the Cliff Notes version of it. But you don't know. So, like, if someone, like, outside of the loop is just like, hey, like, what happened with so-and-so? They don't know. They're going to tell you to go talk to the person that did it. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the amount of information that I have to know to know that is impossible. Yeah. Like, any one of us, with no high-level CEO out of the loop would know 99% of the shit that we do during the day. Mm-hmm. Nor could they. Yeah. yeah. They're probably, they're probably also unable to perform the tasks that we are able to perform. Yeah, which, that's why they hired us, because they can't do it. Yeah. That's kind of how a business works, I guess. You sort of delegate out what you can't do and bullshit your way around and make people believe you can. I guess, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we interrupting our stock analysis at the well, You just have to make the world go around is what it is. All right? Look, I was just looking at the stocks a little bit, you know? From the Wall Street Journal over here. No, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, a lot of it is like BS, man. You, you, you do it, you do it in high school, you do it in college, and you keep doing it, and you keep doing it, and you die with it. Yeah. The, what, what matters at the end of the day, I guess, is like just fucking being comfortable with what you're doing, right? Yeah. Well, like, at the, I guess at the, at the honest end of the day is like, I get what I want out of this. I can make enough money to like go on my vacations. I can afford a roof. I can afford only a roof, no walls, no walls. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, the a hovering roof. It's it's floating, magnetic. I like it. A palapa. It's it's ahead of the times. Pardon. <laughs> a palapa. <laughs> palapa. Yeah. Is palapa. that from uh, Silicon Valley? Yeah. HBO. It's a good show. What is a palapa? It's like a tiki. It's house. like a tiki house, but yeah. a specific name. It's what you want. It's, 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 a, it's like a running gag in the show. Everyone's like, nice, like, tiki hut. He's like, it's a palapa. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a hovering roof? Yeah, yeah, it's basically like four posts. Four posts? A bunch of, like, dry bamboo leaves or something, whatever. Uh, it's banana leaves in Mexico. That's what my grandpa oh, built. banana leaves. He built his first little, like, I think it is a palapa in Spanish. It sounds like a Spanish word. I think it is a palapa. Palapa. <laughs> <'Cause that's my laughs> yeah, I added the Spanish accent and all of a sudden it's yeah. guaranteed. I can do a lot of things on Spanish if you add the accent to it. No, no, but my grandpa, yeah, he, made his, he made his only got banana leaves and there was a method of like weaving it and he made this huge, like it's good, provides nice, cool shade. It's a good gathering spot for like... The yeah, family. shade is typically cool. Well, that, that is how that works. You got that shade or you got like a aluminum like shade, which is different. That, that shade is a hot. Are you telling me that shade from a banana tree versus shade from an aluminum tree is different? Yes. It is a Spanish word. Uh-huh. But aluminum is not. I, I wouldn't use aluminum to make some shade. Either. It's going to be hot. Though, but I'm just saying. Well, you're not sitting on top of it like an oven. No, but you cook it inside. <laughs> I don't think that's how that yeah. works. It's very common on Mexican beaches and deserts. There it is. A palapa? This is, this is what we had? They're most common in Honduras and other Central American countries. I knew Palapa, man. This is my DNA. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but look, why don't people talk about, like, you know, talking about Palapas, like, that was an interesting conversation, you know? This, like, nice tiki hut, this idea, you know? But, like, when you go, I was talking to you earlier about it, like, when, when did we start being perceived by, like, younger folks, like teenagers, as, like, adults? And I, and I don't think it's, it's relevant to, like, how old you are, right? That adds into it, but, like, it's more about, like, the topics that you're talking about, right? When people start talking about taxes and paying the uh, the tag registration fees. 401ks. 401ks. Yeah. That's when, like, kids are like, those are fucking grown-ass adults. Yeah. yeah. And, like, why do people yeah. our age, because, you know, we're all getting there. You know, we've got an old man here, 30. <laughs> he reached, he finally got the big 3-0. Oh, small round of applause for the big 3-0. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Man, and, uh, thanks guys. The rest of us, like, I'm going to be 27 in August. I'm the, the youngest out of the three 
three other members here. Hey, you can see your first minute in our movie, huh? Right, like 27. <laughs> so, uh, like, when, you, we, when we hang out with other people around our age, people are talking about these boring topics, 401k, taxes. Just a while ago, I was looking at a, a, a stock market. Like, boring. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we talking about palapas? <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very confused by the whole thing of that. Well, I mean, it it really boils down to having an air of just having your shit together. Like, uh, one of the one of the new employees at my job, um, I took him out to lunch, uh, and he was, uh, I was telling him, oh yeah, you know, I just turned 30. He was just like, did you get blackout drunk? And I was like, no. I'm 30. I'm 30. <laughs> it's not something that I do anymore. Like, I know, I mean, I drank, yeah, but I know my tolerance limit. I know, like... I haven't had a hangover. I've never been blackout drunk. Like I, I know how to look after myself yeah. when I drink. And he was just like, "Oh man, like I don't, I don't know if I could do that." And I'm just like, "Oh, yeah, you're, you're still a kid." And as we were having these conversations, I was just like, like before we even like took off because I was driving. I was like, "Are you gonna put your seatbelt on?" He was like, "No, I never wear one." And I was like, "What? Put your seatbelt on." <laughs> Oh, is this guy like three years old? No, he's 22. What? You tell him. I could get a ticket for you not yeah, wearing your seatbelt. I could get a ticket. Like, I don't care if you think of this it's like, safe or not, but when yeah. my yeah. money's on the line, you bet you yeah. have to put the seatbelt <laughs> on. points on my license. Yeah. Put your damn seatbelt on. Like, we're not going anywhere until you put that seatbelt on, so just shut up and deal with it. Yeah. So you put the seatbelt on, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's put go. your ass in the trunk. roll through a McDonald's and get him a Happy Meal. <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and a big toy. <laughs> no, but it's true. Like, because yeah. I still drink a lot on the weekends, and uh, but I, I haven't gotten blackout drunk since like college. Yeah. Or, yeah, since college. Since since right before I got like a full time job. Honest, uh, honest truth. I've been I've been pretty wrecked, but I'm not like blacked out. Hmm. In a long time. I don't think my body is built for that anymore. Do you think that it's because your body isn't built for it anymore? you know your limits or you just don't desire it because you've done it so much? Uh, I think it's a combination of like, I don't really want to get blackout, you know? Like I want to, I'm getting to an age when I prefer experiences and remembering the good times, you know? Mm. Like to me, drinking the alcohol is just to enhance the, uh, uh, it's to enhance the experience. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like if everybody's in a happy mood, let's do some shots, let's do some Jager bombs, let's, let's get the energy up. But I'm about like running that all night. So you you don't, you don't run like full RPMs. You're like you back and fly down like ten thousand down to like seven thousand. Right, and then the body's out of practice. Like sure, the body probably could do it because there's plenty of people up in like New York, LA. They're 33, 35, and like they keep partying like it's like when they were twenty one. Yeah, I've seen the Jersey Shore. But that's just because they're fucking like doing that every fucking day. Just because they haven't got they've gotten back into the rhythm of it, you know. Like I don't, I can't do that. Like. Your weekend, your birthday weekend, Mike's, white Mike's, white and black Mike's birthday weekends, weekend, back to back weekends. I haven't done that much drinking in a long time and I was exhausted by the end of both weekends. Yeah. Whereas back in college, I could, I could do that and be like, just another, just another Monday, Tuesday. Do you think that's more influenced by your age or by the lack of you doing it as often? I think it's lack of doing it often because we're still young. Yeah. Even at 30, you're still young. Well, I mean, like, we're, we're still young, but, like, a lot of people our age are doing adult things. Like, one of my good friends uh, told me he's expecting to have a boy in October, and I was just like, oh, man, like, you know, congratulations. But then I was just like, shit, man, we're the same age, and you're having a kid. <laughs> and that's fine. And that's fine, yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong well, with that. It's just like, it's just like, I, like, I... Like, I know I'm an adult, but, like, there's still a lot of things that I feel like I still need to do in order to be a proper adult. I don't like that that's a thing that we have in the world. I don't either, but, like, it's how I'm wired at the moment. And so it's just like, all right, well, like, you know, all of my friends are, like, getting married or, like, having kids or, like, uh, doing all of these things and getting a house. And also talking about the 401ks, and it's just like, man, like, I, it's weird because I remember a time where none of this was important. 
I still live in that time. Yeah. And I still live in that time. I would, I would much I want, rather, I want the palapa. I was just about to say, I would much rather talk about palapas and like go like, what's up, do something weird like parasailing or some, some weird act that no one else deals with. Yeah. Other than the same, the same shit that every other person our age is going into. Nah, yeah. dude, I'd be all about like chilling under a palapa right now, man. Making a, making a palapa, chilling under one, drinking some Mai Tais, getting ready to get on that walk. Even yeah. though I can't drink or swim that well, I do enjoy going to the beach. If you like sitting under palapas. <laughs> <laughs> the remix by White Mike. <laughs> That's your new cologne. Yeah. Under the palapa. Under the palapa. Musk of palapa. <laughs> it reeks of rotten bananas. Palapa's blue. My instant shit. Palapa. Palapa agave. Bro, get, get Matthew McConaughey to do your commercial. Oh my god. <laughs> Palapa's blue. My <laughs> instant shit. <laughs> alright, alright. It's the alright, alright. Yeah. Alright, alright. Be luck. Cool. He's, sitting under, he's sitting under a palapa tree, the camera like pans out. As he rolls a booger? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. We're just having him sit there just staring out to see under a, pal- under a palapa. And then he just holds like, he's holding something in his hand, the camera peers over his shoulder. It's palapa's blue. Palapa's blue. My ESP What would palapa's blue <laughs> smell like? I couldn't imagine it's so good. <laughs> but see, this is the kind of shit you should be talking about. Like, yeah. pull off of blue. It's, yeah. it's just kerosene. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for the but skin. What would be your scent? Yeah, like if you had to characterize a scent. I don't know. How do people smell when they haven't showered for two or three days? Kind of like a... And they, they've done like light to moderate activity. <laughs> <laughs> is it warm outside or cold? It's warm. I would imagine... How humid is it? Yeah. It's human, it's the South. It's definitely human. <laughs> Somewhere between gasoline and a jock strap. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we're also in like Atlanta where it's humid and hot as fuck in the summertime. Yeah, dude, it's like a swamp out there. Yeah. Yeah. It rained earlier today, and I, uh, I was like, oh, the rain will cool off this heat, and I turned my AC off, which was a mistake as I was promptly sweating. <laughs> Yeah, rain doesn't really cool anything down. It's more so just makes it makes it muddy steam. And steam, yeah. yeah. It, makes it, it was. It makes this hot that's hot. not how rain works in other places. I've been. You mean rain cools things elsewhere in the world? Yeah. <laughs> no, not here. Nah. <laughs> not here, good say. The rain doesn't fall. It just sticks in the air. Nah. <laughs> it's good. It's good to be here in the fall. It's good to be here in the spring. Summertime though, not so much. Not so much. Man. I like it, man. Not too hot, not too cold. It gets pretty warm, though. What about you, mate? What's 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 old than Nate? <laughs> Nothing good, I'm sure. Probably somewhere around like. Like, like if you had to make a fragrance, what would you want it to be? What I want to be, or what, what what do I smell like? No, let's not do that. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I smell, that's not like burnt chicken or something. You know when they give you that racist ass response, like burritos? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I smell like a charcoal grill. A <laughs> charcoal grill. What about you, Blackman? Like, uh, I don't know. Somewhere between like apple cinnamon and Febreze. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, so if you had to make a good fragrance, though, would it be a good one? Like, if you wanted to, like, stamp your seal of approval on I still go with the, since we did savory gum, I'm still going with, like, mesquite flavor. Or scent, I suppose, is the word. Not not as strong as, like, walking into a barbecue joint, but there's a little, there's a little hint of some... You know what? You could probably make a nice mesquite cologne, yeah? Because there's those musky colognes. Correct. I wonder if women, how women would perceive that. They'd probably perceive you as more masculine. I don't know. Probably not well. Well, I don't know. That's why they make those musky colognes, right? Because some women, like, sub- subconsciously will, like... Look at you as a more as a more masculine, like a more alpha, right? Because that still happens. I don't know about alpha male versus cologne. No, you still, you still do. You, you wear some scents. I wear the colognes. I say again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you're not know. wrong. You're not wrong. Smelling good. No, I'm just saying. Like, good. I'm just not sure that old day barbecue is really what. Well, you won't name it order barbecue, but just, <laughs> obviously, but unless you're trying to go down and pick someone up from the old rusty nail, I mean, go ahead, farmersonly.com. Whatever you're into. That probably works just fine, order barbecue. I guess, like, I don't know. I'm not sure I want, like, a person to smell like a 
wood grill, a wood burning grill. Well, maybe a little bit of the charcoal. I don't know. That's that's, that's a, a weird, weird one. one. Maybe it attracts the wrong crowd. I mean, I don't know what kind of crowd that attracts. <laughs> I think bears. It probably just like so, like you know what probably would happen, and uh, it probably would attract other dudes, but not like gay dudes, like straight dudes. They just wouldn't know why, but they're just talking to you. You just probably make more. I was like, hey, hey, you smell kind of good. And do you want to go get lunch? Because I'm hungry now. Yeah, you probably just, you probably, <laughs> you probably just have people walking around like, you want a beer, man? You just probably, yeah, that's probably what it would do. You probably would attract more, like, straight guys for no reason. Hey, what's going on, man? Well, first of all, like, for a cologne, like, they got to be really close to you in order to smell you at all. It depends on what you got. No, it depends on the cologne. Yeah, some colognes will, will hit that scent. I mean, you put on, like, well, you're a bar, you're sitting, you're standing next to somebody. What if that scent hits you, you're just like... Like this, this guy's yeah, but you're, you're like you're standing next to somebody at a bar. You're, that's relatively close proximity. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you put this on, you put the, you know, you're on man in town. You think you're gonna go pick up one, but you accidentally put yourself in a pot blocking situation. What what you put on in Puerto Rico where it's like you're drenched in it? Oh, that's that's. Yeah, so sorry, like that's a recipe for disaster. Right? Sorry, not to sorry. generalize Puerto Ricans, by the way. But yeah, some Hispanic communities. Tend to overdo it. Do yeah. over, do over, use the yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people that don't know how to use cologne and will overdo it. Not just in that community, but just in right, right. Community. No, but it is funny to make a specific gesture or something like that, though. Oh yeah. Um. But I mean, I don't know. Like I. I mean, if you bathe in your cologne, like you don't stay on ski. You don't have to smell like applewood bacon. But people, I think you're like barbecue pig man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like this guy probably just finished. Like he he grows so much meat. He's not gonna grow whole hog. Oh my god, that's the name of the cologne. Whole hog, whole hog. He smells like a luau. Whole hog. Dude, I, I, it would that kind of cologne just make me hungry. To be honest, you're right. It just get me really hungry. What yeah, if you had like? Go ahead. I would really want barbecue. Like if somebody like walked in there and just smelled like straight barbecue, I'd be like, man, like. I go for a full pork sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> some all barbecue companies out there in Atlanta, locally and nationwide, we got your next marketing scheme. You get a couple of people walk around wearing some mesquite cologne, you got yourselves a good time. Yeah, like if, if a barbecue joint is, is near any other bars, just send people, send employees to these other bars to get drinks. <laughs> so this is, this is really taking back into that savory gum conversation. A, because obviously it, the savory gum, but what if you had a not only like mesquite cologne, but like dessert cologne? Like you smelled like bananas foster, or you smelled like s'mores. Hmm. Would that be better? I think I think there would definitely be a real market in there if you could like pleasantly smell like chocolate. Mm, okay. Actually, chocolate. Yeah, you could pleasantly smell like chocolate, or like but not like super overdo it. No, like, no, no, no. Yeah, you probably have a big winner there. You actually, you know what? Someone, if someone listens to this, <laughs> we're taking we're taking five percent credit. All right, yeah. like, <laughs> like don't be us. Us. This was your idea. Let it be known. June. What is it? Twenty seventh. Yeah. Twenty eighteen. At seven twelve p.m. Nineteen standard time. Nineteen hours. Yeah. <laughs> ten, ten minutes. This idea. Black Muck. Chocolate Cologne. There go part of this podcast as well. Pumpernickel Podcast is owed 10% finder's fee <laughs> for all savory and dessert colognes. Oh, man. Big yeah, cosmetics. Like, cosmetics. Big gum. Big gum. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Buku bucks. Buku dog rolls. Look like chocolate, smell like chocolate. Boom. I mean... What, the, what a great fucking slogan. I mean, it's not the worst I've ever heard. I'm going to say that's... Kind of okay. <laughs> you kind of got some brewing here. Yeah, it's good. But anything like something like that, or like even like a dessert, dessert like bananas foster, or like some sort of caramel sauce type of thing, those tend to smell kind of good. Not wrong. Yeah. Not wrong. I'm not saying I want to talk about talking about those kind of things, the things that you would find of like pleasant, pleasant, or you can even get snacks at like fairs or like circuses. You want to smell like Doritos? Well, I'm just, no, I'm just saying, like, you know, you get, like, funnel cakes and stuff, but, like, I thought, the crazy thought, like, got into my head, and I was like, what do clowns smell like? Because I don't remember. 
It's been a long time since I've been to the circus. That's not a question that I don't, uh, that I think I ever knew the answer to. And it's one that I don't ever think I really want the answer no, to. No, I don't think I do, but I just thought about it. Like, what? Because we were talking about clowns earlier, uh, you know, when we were talking about CEOs. We didn't talk about it right now, but like... Yeah, we'll get into that in just a second. That, yeah, that's but, a good sidebar. But I don't know, like, do they have an aroma? As a kid, as a small kid, I found them creepy as fuck. Because they are, yes. Yeah, and then as I got older, I was like, ah, they're just doing their thing, leave me alone. But like, because these guys are like, usually larger, walking around sweating. Well, not, they're not all John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> I'm just saying, they're walking around sweating all day, wearing this suit. Yeah. yeah. And circus time, when it's like, you know, probably what, spring, summertime? I would imagine it's a similar aroma to a Christmas time mall Santa. What does that smell like? Dude, I can't remember. It's not good. Do you remember? Do you know, Mike? What, what is it? That's a question I think Google wouldn't even know the answer to. Does it smell like, like, just, smell like, dry, like fresh dry cleaning? Is that what it is? No, it's not fresh. <laughs> it's not fresh. It depends on what time of the day you've got to mall Santa. Um, I've never, I've never gone to a mall Santa before, but like I would imagine, like you know, obviously at the beginning of the day they're cool, but then like you've got child after child after child, after you know, uh, a course of like let's say eight hours. If you show up at like you know, seven fifty nine, because eight hour shift, it's just like oh man, like you smell a little right, babe. Yeah, it probably smells like kid farts. Or you just, or you just downing with breathing your fifteen minute breaks. I don't think so. I think it's more like Bad Santa where he's smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and playing pinball. Well, sorry people's challenge. <laughs> Santas and clowns don't smell good. For those of you who actually enjoy clowns. And well, the other, the other thing is, there are different types of clowns. You've got like the birthday party clown, then you've got like the Ringling Brothers clown, then you've got like... The Cirque du Soleil the, clown. The Cirque du Soleil clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got like the rodeo clown. Ah, uh, the rodeo clown. The rodeo clown I can respect. They got some werewolves. Yo, that rodeo clown, you got me. Yeah, you got you guys got some cojones. <laughs> AKA balls. Do you know what you're doing? I mean, like, I mean got two werewolves. C. Chased down a bull with a barrel wearing a tie and a funny nose. That's a special kind of person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go on both this conversation, because now that we've distinguished that there are mul- multiple types of clowns, let's discuss the realities of clown college. <laughs> cause you, cause there's, there's gotta be like a head clown, right? Like the head clown's the owner of the clown company. The dean. The dean. Well, there's a college, so there should be a dean of clown. There's a, there's a, is it clown dean or dean clown? Vice principal? Well, no, not vice principal. It's probably the clown dean. Or is it a chancellor of clowns? You, you gotta start with clown, and then clown first, and then everything else after. So what clown dean? Clown and who's the class clown? Oh. No, you probably don't have all the victorians, right? You have like the ducks. Who's the dunce of Clown College? That's the valedictorian of Clown College is the dunce. That's the only <laughs> one I can think of when like being a dunce is like appropriate, right? I mean, I guess. What a hell of a title though, to be given dunce of, dunce of the graduating class. Mm-hmm. And that'd be a good thing. You an exploding trophy? <laughs> what? So I guess I'm just going to compare Clown College to regular human college. What are courses and hours like at Clown College? Are you taking like balloon animals and like adjusting your fro and like face painting one on one? Well, you gotta have you gotta have face painting because that's a necessary skill. Uh, uh, depending on the type of clown you are, depending on depending on your major. Uh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> that that thing between rodeo clown and like <laughs> birthday clown. Yeah, you know, like uh, uh, rodeo clowns obviously have to have PE. Cause <laughs> you, you can't be a rodeo clown and not be in shape. But, oh my gosh! Uh, your you got uh, for the birthday clowns you need you need balloon animals. You have to have a a decent repertoire of ballooning. Possibly a minor and magicianry. Possibly a minor and magicianry, um, but definitely like you you really need like a full zoo of balloon animals. Mmm. Yeah, man. Apparently, it was a thing between 1968 and 1997. What is this? Clown college. Yeah. Created by like Urban Field, then co owner of the Ringling Bros and Barlow Bailey Circus, and help from former Ringling Clown and author slash illustrator Bill Ballantyne, who became Clown College's second dean. See, they do have deans. The dean of Clown the College. The dean of Clown College, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But isn't that still a thing though? Like, I thought, like, out Steve there. Steve went to that. 
Yeah, it's not like out there somewhere, like, clown college is still very much, like, a real thing. It's harder to get into than uh, Harvard. Well, the Cirque du Soleil <laughs> Academy training one is. is that's is, the one, that's the one that's like, because you got to be, like, a hell of an acrobat. Like, they go around, they just, that one has, like, worldwide applicants and... Oh, yeah, because it's Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know... Is Ray and Brothers still a thing? I think they're done now. They're done? Yeah, but they, there's a couple. I'm looking it up. There's a... Um, there's a couple people still out there doing Del, it? Del Arte, Del Arte International. Um, there's Center for Movement Theater with Dodi Destano. Yeah, um, like, there's, there's still... Celebration Bond Theater. So you can get, like, a PhD in rodeo clowning. I don't know if you get PhD. Dr. Clown? Clown? <laughs> there's a place called the Pig Art. Pig Heart? Pig Heart. Circus, okay. circus Center? Because, uh, I mean, like, I know clown, I was about to say, like, I know clown colleges still have to exist. Because, I mean, there are schools out there to teach people how to be mermaids. So, uh, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> it's $4,000. Fact check this, guys. But, yeah, I believe. <laughs> um, I mean, there's, there's colleges for doing damn anything now. Yeah, so, I mean, like, it, it, <laughs> uh, there was a, Somebody pointed out, uh, well, it was John Oliver last week tonight, pointed out that there's like a, a school for like elf spotting or some shit like that. Elf what? Spotting. Like seeing elves? Seeing elves. That is, <laughs> that is a real thing that people pay real human dollars to what, do. What, what do you make of this, Mike? What, Mike? Elf spotting? Elf spotting. It's just way for... The people up top to make we're, money. We're, we're <laughs> You're not kidding, man. What a fucking hustle that is. <laughs> Elf spotting? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. like, so it's teaching people how to be a mermaid. Like, they should start a Sasquatch spotting school. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe I should. Get you that clown bean. Maybe I will. Be out there in the woods, like, alright, these are your binoculars. Alright, so you get how you adjust them. Right. And then, uh, like, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn. We, you're gonna spot Sasquatch. You gotta be in the woods. You gotta know how to camp. You gotta know how to set fire. I mean, it's basically like uh, Boy Scouts. Yeah, Boy right. Scouts. And you sit out there and you're just like, all right, cool. Like we're gonna. I've watched enough of that Sasquatch like Discovery Show channel. I could teach people to spot Sasquatch. Okay, so quick, <laughs> quick <laughs> off of that, <laughs> this like finding Sasquatch series or whatever. Who doesn't know the ending to that? If they had found Sasquatch, <laughs> you would have heard about it. I watched one the other day where it was like they're trying to find like treasure on this like dead island or whatever it's called. I would have known already if they found this treasure. I wouldn't wait to find it out yeah. on this Discovery Channel show. Question, how do we get a show on Discovery? Like what do we have to sell does it, does, does it, Do I just have to send a letter to some producer? Yeah. And be like, well, you have uh, white people traveling the world looking at animals. You have black people traveling the world looking at animals. How about a multiracial group of people yeah, going around? With no prior animal experience, that There's makes probably for, something there. That yeah. makes for good TV. Yeah, it's just like, hey, we're gonna go look at a bunch of ridiculous animals. We don't have any experience with these animals. We don't know how to deal with these animals. Everything will work out fine. We'll sign the waivers. I mean, to be fair, that's kind of what we're doing now, minus the animals. <laughs> <laughs> they're a white people podcast. They're a black people podcast. But we're the only five-team chemistry engineer and computer science major. Multi-racial group of podcasters. All right, let's go. Let's go on. Uh, let's go on Animal Safari. I mean, nah. I guess it used to be cool to watch a bunch of weird dudes play with a koala. I don't know what the what the cell is there. Till the koala bites you. The cell is our interaction. Do koalas have big teeth? I don't know, but I'm not trying to find koalas out. Koalas can be vicious if they're cranky. Koalas are dicks. No, 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 they're not dicks. I think they can be cranky if you wake them up. Dude, you anything, you. anything can attack you, and they, and they have like rabies. Mother Nature has taught me very harsh lessons. I don't trust anything in nature. Yes, yeah, so that's why you should come on this trip. <laughs> that's why one hundred percent I don't want to be on this trip. Be, you can be geared up exactly. This is exactly why you should come. Oh my you god! You make it ten koala, times more entertaining. A koala has a tooth like I don't know, like a cartoon redneck baby. Yeah, it's got these. Like, it's got that one tooth. Mm. Ooh no! It's like, almost like a snapping turtle. Right, right. You, don't have to, you don't have to touch it. Like I'm not it's trying to get bit by that. Good. That, that, is, that is taking on a thumb for sure. That big old snaggle tooth. Yes. Like, uh, snaggle tooth. Snaggle tooth. There was one point where I went to a, uh, a, a rabbit shelter to volunteer uh, for a day. A what? A rabbit shelter. 
A palapas for rabbits? <laughs> hey Mike, 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 do you want a couple of uh, your rabbit idea? No, 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 hold on. <laughs> Please continue the rabbit hat. But yeah, so like I was uh, I was sitting there and like they were just like, hey, you know, you want to feed the rabbit? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, it's, hey, what's going on? And I was like, get some food and fucking rabbit bit the shit out of me. And I was like, yeah. nah. They bite through carrots, homie. <laughs> yeah, they got some strong cheapuses. Yeah, yeah, they do. As I found out the hard way, as he did not eat the food, but ate me instead. And I'm like, mm, nah, I'm never, good. not doing this anymore. They're also super fast. They are. But they can also get, like, super big, which is weird. Like, when you see one that's, like, the size of, like, a toddler, and you're like, hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't believe it until I saw them. Like a pet, like a pet rabbit. They're fat. They're big. It's like the Garfield rabbits. They eat lasagna. Yeah, I guess that's what happens when you domesticate most animals. They just get fat and they get big. Because they're not used to having to run around and live off the fat of the land. Oh, it's like competing a... for, like, resources. Yeah. It's just like, all right, like... I... Normally, like, out in the wild, I gotta run to, like, get away from predators and, like, scour the earth in order to find food. Food just comes to me and I don't have any predators anymore, so I don't have to, like, run around. Yeah. It's so kind of like a I'll domestic just... pig versus a wild hog. Yeah. Or boar. Because all those boars get big as fuck, though. Uh, they're big and mean. <laughs> yeah. They have they they skin that's, like, an inch thick. Yeah, have you seen people going, like, shooting them off, like, the back of, uh, yes. like... What are they called? Wind helicopter? Well, they're like little wind like uh, boats, you know. Oh, it's like a fan boat. Fan boats, yeah. And like they just got shotguns down in Louisiana because there's so many. Yeah. They're just shooting them with shotguns till they come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that before. Yeah. Same with the uh, it's a thing called a nutria. It's like a rat, but it's like the size of a beaver. Dude, I saw a beaver attack someone on YouTube once. Some Ooh. trout fishermen. Dude, we've gone way off topic. <laughs> yeah, actually, we had, we had, we had really back in. Yeah. We, we have gone a full 90 degrees. Back to this clown college. Let's make more sense with clown college. Because <laughs> that's a topic that seems yeah. normal. I don't think there's much sense to make. Did Ronald McDonald go to clown college? Excellent question. Because Ronald McDonald was a real person. Wait, yeah, I mean, there's a guy dressed like Ronald McDonald. Well, no, 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 but, like, was it just the character they came up with, or was there a guy that, like... Actually named Ronald McDonald? Well, Ooh. that, like, worked with, like, whoever was starting McDonald's at the time and said, let me... Let me be your mascot. Let, let me be your mascot, yeah. Like, was, there, was the first Ronald McDonald actually a guy who wanted to be that mascot? Or did some crazy asshole walk into a McDonald's wearing a clown suit and say, you know what, I got you? I don't know. Because no, Ronald is a, very, is a very real name. Yeah. But yeah. McDonald's is not. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, there very well could have been a real Ronald McDonald to be the mascot. But did the real Ronald McDonald drive a red shoe car? I mean... Where did this idea come from? Yeah. Because, uh, like, you know, I, I didn't see the movie, but I heard, I heard it was good about, like, how McDonald's came about that fast. I forget that movie was that covered it. Oh, it's got the, uh, Michael Keaton. Right, it's got Michael Keaton in it. Um, the, the founder or something? The founder, that's exactly right, yeah. Hmm. Uh, that covers how it began, but like, so how does one go about like coming up with Ronald McDonald and the burglar, uh, hamburger, the hamburger, or grimace, grimace? Yeah, these characters. Like, who the fuck thought this would be a good mascot? AKA Purple Cookie Monster. AKA Purple People Eater. Well done. <laughs> well, done. plus one for you. <laughs> Cause like you know how they had to come up with Wendy's mascot and like Kate or she's mascot, the Colonel. Were these people real people? The Colonel Wendy from Wendy's? Well, I'm pretty sure. I think those are, right? Yeah, the Colonel's really guy. Yeah, the Colonel's yeah. a real dude. Uh, I think. Because uh, they have those little bio pics where you go to these fast food restaurants. Yeah, I think uh, Wendy is actually like somebody's daughter. Um, that they oh, just, the company, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, yeah. They just decided to name their, their company after her. Now she's there everywhere. However, I do not think there was a king of burgers. Or there's Ronald McDonald. Who is Ronald McDonald? Is no, no, Burger King. King. I don't think there's a King of Burgers. No, I don't think so. But like Ronald McDonald, is he some guy's cousin? That started, was he the founder's cousin? He, he's like some, some very was special he, cousin. Was he like your creepy <laughs> uncle? Like the creepy uncle in everybody's family? He's like, you know what? I can profit off him. Ronald McDonald, here we go. I mean, it worked out pretty good for him. I guess it did. But so back to this clown college thing. There's, I, I would like to discuss this further. So we just, like, the 101 classes are like, you know, theory of b balloon animals and like, you know, the art of makeup. What are the advanced classes? Like what's the, uh, like the master's degree classes? 
pie throwing. <laughs> Probably not easy to throw whipped cream pies. Yeah, accurate pie. Yeah, accurate pie throwing. Uh, I mean, you guys should uh, you can think of the physics of the pie and like calculate trajectories of pie throwing. Yeah, you need a lot of geometry for that. Uh, As a decent amount of physics in there. Um, you have to watch Patch Adams three times. In a row? No, every day. Wow. That it's is, grad school, man. That is commitment to the cause. It is. Yeah, do you like watch lots of like comedic movies? I would imagine that's a good training exercise. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, your, like your, uh, your uh, senior project is like a hands-on sort of skit analysis of different or, or performance. No, yeah. your, your, your senior analysis has got to be like making random kids laugh. Mm. Yeah, well, like depending on your, depending thing, on your you know, like, you guys rodeo clowns will be at that. Yeah, but like, you know, if you're gonna be a clown, somebody has to find you funny. So you have to, you have to prove before you can get out of here that you are funny on some level. So there's some sort of laugh-o-meter in the back room of this clown college. So like a stress analysis, there's like a laugh analysis <laughs> yeah, device. I mean, you know, it's just like, all right, you know, like. Show me what you got. And you're just like, all right, cool. Like, you, know, you walk up there, you make a balloon animal, you make up another another balloon animal, and you just like, you know. Bust a little magic axe. That's probably grad school work. So bust a little magic axe, you know, hit yourself in the face with a pie. Uh, do the sprints or the, uh, the buzzing, the electric buzz stuff, you know. Mm, all the things. classics. Look for you, man. You gotta do something like challenging. Like, I don't Someone know who has juggling. I forgot about juggling. Oh, dude, juggling is definitely a bad spot. That's a whole semester. Bro, that's like a two semester course. Juggling 101 and juggling 202? Yeah, except it's like juggling 401, juggling 402. Yeah, because eventually you get to like chainsaws and knives. Bro, yeah, juggling ain't no well, joke. Yeah, well, but you're not trying to take chainsaws and knives to like a birthday party. Well, um, that's what I'm saying, depending on the major. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, once, you, once you get like the general gist down, then you can start, you know, Wilding out of control, but uh, so I guess all clowns rodeo to Cirque du Soleil probably start off with like theory of costume and like nose placement and makeup. Yeah, you, you yeah, I think those are those are probably universal specific universal. Yeah, those, yeah. Are your, those are your core classes, and, like balance and like flexibility and whatnot. But even like uh, party clowns still have to have like you know they balance a the chair in their nose or some goofy shit like that. Yeah, or I mean, like, well, you also just need balance in general because your shoes are like twice the size of your feet. Truth. You basically, walk around with uh, flippers. Yeah, which is extremely dangerous. Uh, for those of you who don't know, walking around in flippers is a one way ticket to falling flat on your face. Correct. That's a great way to break your nose. <laughs> if you're looking to break your nose, kids, that's a, that's a great way to do it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Public service announcement. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, every, all four degrees of clowning would start off with the core competencies of, you know, balance and color theory. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it is. Because, yeah, you're working on a, like, uh, on a shortened time scale, right, I'm assuming. Would you be, or is it a four-year degree? Or is it, like, a, like a technical degree? I think it's, like, a, I don't think it's a four-year degree, man. Well, I think it would be, I, I think it would be four years, but it would be, like, uh, it would be like work study. It'd be like two years of you taking classes, and then like two years of you like practically like in the field doing stuff like an internship. So it's kind of like a clown MBA because you got the, the two year study, and then usually you work with an MBA. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, man. I haven't seen a clown in action in many a year. I guess the uh, the tax taxes aren't going to clown colleges anymore. It's a it's a dying trade. Apparently. Like, I don't know. What do clowns do? Like, no, it is. Scare people? <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of people that, well, that's another reason why it's a dying trade. A there is only Six Flags fight prep list, though. Yeah, those are just, like, scary clowns. They're meant to be scared. Yeah. But, I mean, like... like normal clowns, I think people are, yeah, not buying them anymore. No? I don't think so, right? I mean, like... It's a little kid's party arena. Yeah. I don't think little kids do that anymore. Now they've been no? they've been they've been corrupted by all the uh, technology, the technologies. Yeah. And well, because I mean, like, because mm. uh, having having a clown at a birthday party requires a lot of social interaction. Like, you gotta throw a birthday party, and you gotta have enough friends to show up to make this party warrant having a clown. Truth. 
And it's like, nowadays, kids don't want to do that. Mm. Like, most kids would rather have, like, a LAN party for video games than, like, have a clown. I saw a video game bus the other day for parties. It's a dying trade. All the pies that could have been thrown, that never will be thrown. Never will be thrown. There's a workforce out there that's dwindling. I mean, it's kind of like the, skill, the skills trade that's dwindling. Maybe yeah. There's a clown trade that's dwindling. You gotta... Uh, it up that clown game, baby. That's true. But I heard we're gonna need a lot of truckers by 2030 or 2040. So all you clowns out there... Maybe get into trucking. Maybe. Yeah. You can still wear your clown suit if you really want to. Right. You can, yeah. There's no stopping you there. Invest in the CDL license and the training courses and stuff. Truth. Yeah, it probably just a strip to get in. No, one DUI. Hell, you know yeah. what? Maybe you could develop your own line of trucking that's clown trucking, and that's like, it's like maybe it's like more cheerful clown trucking. I think we've gone way up the rails. I think that's about time to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that that's where we're gonna stop. <laughs> that's, gonna stop. Clown that's the one. Fucking trucking. Well, I mean, like you got Pink Plumber going around. See, you could have you know like just a, a series of trucks that have been painted like clowns. I mean, what is painted like clowns? Rainbow colors and painted like clowns. You know what? Yeah, if, yeah. if if you did paint it like clowns, which I was assuming would be rainbow colors, which which is what you said, something along those lines. I think it would be a smash hit because of the gay community thinking that this is a gay trucking line. Hmm. I think you got. I, I feel like they would look past yeah. that pretty quick. Yeah, I, I, I really I feel like they would they would look at one truck and be like, huh, okay, interesting, and then they look at another one and be like. That's got a that's got like bozo on it. Like I don't I don't know. Well, now we're trying to straight up clowns on it. I thought it was just gonna be the color. Well, no, I mean it had like you know weird designs of all sorts of colors and shapes, much like a clown suit. But yeah. on the side it would say you know clown truck and whatever the name of this company yeah. is. I don't know. That's it could get kind of terrifying. Well, is this a twisted metal where we're driving like a fire breathing <laughs> like machine gun <laughs> truck? You know, truck no, no, they no, no. They get scratch different. that whole previous idea. We need Twisted Metal driving around. I'm oh, screwed. No, <laughs> we do not. The Twisted Metal game would be so fire right now, man. I'm just saying. I'd enjoy it. <laughs> you guys have a death race, you got machine guns on your Mustang? That's right. That well, I mean, we so don't need, like, the actual, like, real, like, oh, real no, Twisted no, no, Metal no, no, with, like, no, no. live guns. But, like, if, if I saw a, like, a, like, Twisted Metal, like, truck driving down the street, I'm taking a photo of that thing. Like Mad Max? Like, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Dude, you get you get higher. I, I think you roll up somewhere with a big rig like that. No, they tell you get the fuck off my property. <laughs> you drove up in a thirteen ton war machine. <laughs> I don't think these guys are like, hey, you know what? This guy's our new CEO. You could be. You never know. You could BS your way to the top. And that's, mean, that's the lesson, isn't it? On that note, can you drive to work in an ice cream truck? Because that would be hilarious. Yeah, I mean, you can drive to work and whatever. Why not, right? People be looking at you weird. People are probably going to ask you, hey, do you have That's my this flavor of ice cream when you get there? Especially now in the, the heat of the summer. But, I mean, does that inspire more or less confidence in you if your CEO shows up driving like a an old mail truck or like a tractor with a combine in the front? Is it just his eccentricities? And I, think, I, think, yeah, I think it's just an, an eccentric motherfucker. Like, yeah, I, mean, like, I would be concerned and confused, but like, I mean, if this person is the CEO, it's just like, all right, well, you, probably like, know what you're doing. You had to do something. <laughs> oh, there it is. That's what it is. That's the typical response. Like, like you, you would, you had, you had to do something to get to the position that you were at. So, there's the, there's the false assumption coming right out the gate. Yeah, but like you, uh, uh, see, there it is. There it is. Let's see, you're going to be a dumb dumb just like us. BS your way to the top, folks. That's the message. <laughs> and if you do, you too can drive an ice cream truck to work. Right. <laughs> so, on that note, let's wrap it up with don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Pod. And if you have any ideas or suggestions yeah. for topics or concerns, please feel free to tweet at us at Pod. Or email us at pumpernickelpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. yeah. Also, look us up on YouTube. You know, just Google Pumpernickel Podcast. You'll find us. We're the only Pumpernickel Podcast. <laughs> yeah. We're unique as fuck. Yeah, we made sure of that. <laughs> yeah. There's not a whole lot of Pumpernickel uh, diversity out there. Yeah. Very right. singular. <laughs>